Hey guys, this is Marco. I'm your local watch cardinal bringing you a another video and uh, 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 wait a minute. What the heck is going on? I am officially bald. That's right guys. I am bald. Hey, it is what it is. For those of you who know, you know, but for those of you who don't, let's just put it this way. My clippers went rogue and unfortunately a mishap happened and I'm now officially bald. To be honest with you, I don't really mind it. I think that it actually isn't that bad of a look on me. I just don't think I have the head shape for a bald head, but it is what it is. At the rate that my hair grows, uh, I'll probably have hair back in about one or two weeks. So it's not that big of a deal. So the video today, guys, I'd like to bring you a collection review that a fan sent me. I'd love to do videos like these at a frequency of about one to two per week. Again, bear in mind that my original goal for this YouTube channel was to post two to four videos a week. But of course, I'm a university student as well. I do appearances on the Archie Luxury live stream. So I do have limited time and unfortunately limited resources. So I can't ultimately always just pump out the content as quickly as I would like to. But I would love to uh, review your collections out there. So if you would like, you can of course send me uh, your collections to watchcardinal99 at gmail.com. Of course, these aren't any kind of paid reviews. Uh, I just do these personally for my own enjoyment and for your guys' entertainment. But of course, if you would like to support me at any time, uh, I do have a link to my PayPal down in the description below. Again, you're under no obligation whatsoever to support me. But if you would like to uh, kind of show your support and help me in my collecting and YouTube journey, just know that any and all donations are greatly, greatly appreciated and go towards, of course, pumping out better uh, content for you guys. So going into today's review, we have a collector who has just a phenomenal story. He got into watches in 2018 after kind of uh, a lot of hard, going through a lot of hardship, personal hardship in his life, and ultimately kind of upended his life. Worked extremely hard and worked extremely diligently, and ultimately made something of itself. And I have to say that is at least put into into today's world extremely commendable. You know, this world is a mean, nasty, and vicious place, and it can be extremely hard to kind of lift yourself up by the boot, bootstraps and ultimately make something of yourself. It, you know, it is not easy in today's world uh, to accomplish many things because ultimately it is an extremely competitive world and, you know, things are, are, are very tough. Thing, we are in dire times nowadays and I think even just in this hobby alone, uh, we don't actually realize just how fortunate we are. So diving into this collection, um, of course, I'm going to keep out his name and his information just for the sake of privacy, but I will be posting pictures of his collection. In terms of his collection, he's got a GMT Master 2 Black Black Black. He's got a Rolex Submariner No Date that's in the 40 mil, so it's the previous model. He's got a Blue Dial Fluted Bezel Jubilee Bracelet Datejust. He's got a Rolex Explorer 1. He's got an Omega Speedmaster, that's the previous version with the 1861 caliber. He's got a Breitling Navitimer. He's got a uh, Zenith El Primero Chronomaster in the 38 mil size. He's got an IWC Spitfire in bronze. He's got a JLC Reverso. And of course, the showstopper, at least in my opinion, of his collection is an extremely rare State of Qatar dial Tudor Black Bay Burgundy. Now, these were made in a very, very limited production. Uh, Arabic, Arabic dials actually from Rolex and from Tudor uh, have been done in the past before, but they've always been extremely limited, extremely collectible, and of course, extremely, extremely rare. So for me, I think this is definitely the showstopper of the collection. It is a watch that you ultimately, as uh, Archie would say, hoard and possess. I think it's something that you want to keep, that you want to pass down to future generation. And I think considering your story and where you come from, I think it makes for an excellent, excellent watch and an excellent story overall. So what do I think of the collection? I think it's a phenomenal collection. Now, from what I know, the GMT Master 2 Black 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 and the JLC Reverso were both gifts from his mom. So, hey, props to your mom. She has phenomenal taste, not just in watches, but, uh, but of course, to have helped you out in your watch collection journey. That deserves a big round of applause from all of us. I think those are both phenomenal watches and are definite keepers, whatever you do. Uh, and in terms of what he's looking to, forward to getting next. I know he's mentioned to me that his AD is going to get him the new 41 mil uh, date Submariner. So that's in the new 41 mil size. And he is planning as well to get the GMT Master 2, which is known as the Batman. So that's the Batgirl, I guess you can call it on the Jubilee bracelet. 
I think personally that the 41 mil date Submariner might be a little bit redundant in your collection. You know, you do already have a no date, but hey, if you can get it at retail, I mean, you would have to have rocks for brains not to pick it up. So at the end of the day, I definitely say you should at the very least pull the trigger and then decide what you want to do with it in the future. If you want to maybe return the favor and give it as a gift to your dad, I think that would be a phenomenal idea, uh, you know, kind of just to repay the favor that your mom did for you. But I think that ultimately you definitely should pick up the 41 mil Submariner and then decide what you want to do from it from there. Personally, I just think it is a little bit redundant in the collection because you do already have a lot of steel sports watches. And of course, uh, the GMT Master 2, I think, is a definite pickup and a definite keeper in the collection, not just for the rarity of the watch, but more so uh, in connection to the story with your mom and how she got you the black, black, black. I think that having that two piece combo meal deal is just an incredible story. It's why I personally collect watches. It's the stories, the memories that we build with these material possessions. And so I would say that you have to pick up that GMT Master 2. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's beautiful. And of course, I think it relates to the black, black, black just perf perfectly. And of course, that black, black, black is the watch that got you into watches. So I think it's kind of you becoming full circle as a collector. Now, in terms of uh, the actual collection itself, uh, what else would I keep? What else would I get rid of? Honestly, I would keep just about everything. I think that there's nothing wrong with what you have. I like kind of the, co the collections that you built up, the kind of Rolex collection and the non-Rolex collection your collection of chronographs, that being the Speedmaster, the Navitimer, and the El Primero. The one thing that I would say I would get rid of is the IWC Spitfire uh, in the bronze case. Now, I know you said you got it for a good discount. It seems to be kind of your fun watch to mess around with. Personally, th again, this is just my personal opinion. I don't love bronze cases. They have a very weird smell to them. And also, you know, over, over time, these cases become green. They tarnish. So they're just not to my taste. If it were my collection personally, I would get rid of the IWC Spitfire and replace it with a different watch. Now, what would that watch be? Obviously, you already have two watches incoming, so your budget, I'm sure, is you know kind of kind of limited as a result, right? Because you're going to be saving up for these two that are incoming. But ultimately, to me, I think that you need a showstopper that goes beyond the Tudor Black Bay Burgundy. That's an amazing watch, but it's not really something that is high horology. And yeah, sure, you can call the Reverso high horology, granted, granted, but however, it is not, in my opinion, true high horology from a true high horology maker. You know, the Reverso is more the entry level high horology watch. Considering your collection, I think that obviously you're not limited in terms of the cash. And I think that there are options out there that would be fantastic for you to add to your collection. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about going to Geneva. I'm talking about Switzerland. I'm talking about an incredible maker of high horology movements and high horology cases. I'm talking a historic manufacturer of watches. And who am I looking at? I'm looking at the one and only, the neg neglected of the Holy Trinity, Vacheron Constantin. That's right, guys. I think Vacheron gets overlooked by a lot of collectors to the benefit of those who are in the know. I think that Vacheron makes absolutely unbelievable watches. I think they're just beautiful. And of course, they can be had at a significant discount out, off of retail if you buy it on the gray market, or even I'm sure if you go into the retail stores, you can haggle a little bit with them and see if you can secure a discount. Now, ultimately, there are two options that you can go. You can go kind of what I consider to be the more safe route, and that would be the Vacheron Constantin Overseas uh, in the blue dial, the Gen 3 version. You seem to be somebody who does like, uh, of course, both watches on a leather strap and on a bracelet. The Vacheron Overseas gives you the option of the bracelet, the leather strap, and of course the rubber strap. So I think that's a versatility that would be tremendous. And I think you would really fall in love with that watch. That watch is an incredible watch. It's made just beautifully. I actually prefer it to the Nautilus and the AP Royal Oak. I don't really like both of those watches. I prefer the Overseas out of the three. I also like the versatility it provides with being able to change the straps. And I really do believe they can be had, you know, at a, at a, at a fair price. I mean, these can be picked up at, at a authorized dealer for their retail price. And, you know, the wait lists on them aren't anything crazy. You do have to be a bit patient. But, I mean, you're somebody who buys Rolex and waits patiently for Rolex. So why not something for Vacheron? So that would be kind of my safe pick, something that is still gorgeous, that is from a high horology movement maker, that is from a historic brand, from the Holy Trinity, but it's not the pick that I personally would choose. 
what would I take from Vacheron that is a little bit different? Now you seem to like your steel cases as opposed to anything in precious metal. So I'm going to recommend something again in steel that is a dress watch. So it's a little bit different from everything else that you have in collection. And the watch I'm talking about is actually the Vacheron Constantin Historiques 1942. Now I know it's not to everybody's taste and potentially it's not to your taste either, but I think this would really help bring your collection over the top and would show that you're not just an enthusiast of watches, but you're an enthusiast of horology. We're talking in this watch, a Geneva seal movement, a Geneva seal case. We're talking a beautiful cream dial, a triple calendar. So we're talking day, a date and a month indicator. Of course, it's in a steel case, so it's a lot more usable than something in rose gold or white gold or yellow gold. And I personally really like that. And of course, it's got just an incredible, an incredible cream dial with that Arabic font. I think is just beautiful. I think that overall, that would be a real showstopper in your collection. It would show that you're a true enthusiast of watches and it would ultimately bring your collection over the top. So that's ultimately my pick overall. I would go Vacheron Constantin either in the Gen 3 overseas with a blue dial if you want to be more safe. But if you do want to be out there, I feel like it would suit you quite well if you went for the History 1942. You show that you're not really afraid to think outside the box and wear watches that are different as shown by the kind of Zenith El Primero, the Breitling Navitimer and the IWC Spitfire in the bronze case. So I think that Vacheron Historiques 1942 overall would just put your collection over, over the top and would show that you're a true enthusiast of watches and of horology. Those are my picks. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Again, I just want to give you a big thumbs up and a big props to you for taking over your life, for showing who's boss and ultimately making something of yourself. That is something to be commended, especially in today's world. Uh, so ultimately props to you, props to your collection. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And here's to many more years of collecting. Guys, I'm going to end this video on that. I just want to thank you all for reaching the end of this video. Make sure to drop a like if you will. Subscribe for more videos in the future if you haven't already. Of course, again, feel free to send me your collections to watchcardinal99 at gmail.com. Again, no promises I get to those, those collection reviews anytime soon, uh, but I will try my best. And again, if you would like to support me, my PayPal link is down in the description box below. Again, I'd like to reiterate, you're under no obligation to do so. But of course, know that all donations are greatly appreciated. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Marco. I'm your local watch colonel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.